I'm Michael Lizell with Enonic USA. In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating the Superhero Blog app on the Enonic Experience platform. The Superhero app is basically a responsive WordPress site that we recreated in XP. It has demo content that's automatically imported when Superhero is installed, so we can play around with that to see how everything works. If you haven't installed Superhero yet, there's a link in our documentation's Getting Started guide at xp.readthedocs.org. Let's get started. Opening the Content Manager reveals a single Superhero site content. The content tree can be expanded by clicking the black arrows. So the toolbar is on top, the content panel is on the left, and the preview panel is on the right. The Content Manager is fully responsive, so if your screen is narrow, then the preview will be on the bottom. You'll only see previews for content that has been configured to render as a page. So the site, the search, and post will have previews, but folders and categories and authors won't. Categories and authors are only used by the post as related content, so they don't need to be rendered as pages. The toolbar options are self-explanatory, but I'll quickly cover the search capabilities. The search menu is toggled by clicking the magnifying glass. You can reveal content by type, or by when it was last modified, or you can just start typing to reveal all content with particular keywords. This is a blogging site, so let's make a new blog post content. I want to create it in the post folder, so I'll right click that and select new. This opens the create content dialog with all of the installation's content types listed on the left. If I wanted to create a new image or file content, then I would click the upload button, or I could just drag the files into this content dialog. But now I'm making a post content, so I'll just click that. Notice the content editor opens in a new tab. I can go back to the content panel at any time by clicking the content manager link and go back to my new tab here. This has a red circle on it to let me know that this content is not yet valid. That means a required field, the post text field, is still empty. I'll go ahead and give it a name. Every content type has a display name. No more headless giraffe. And you'll notice that the line beneath it is filled in with the URL friendly version of the title. If you don't like long URLs, this can be modified. So the first thing to enter here is the author. The author is a related content. I've already created a couple. I'll go ahead and select myself. The category is also a related content, but this time you can pick more than one. I'll go ahead and add a couple of random categories here and apply those. Now, notice the preview doesn't update until the content is saved. You can save a content by clicking the Save Draft button or using Command S or Control S on Windows. So I'll go ahead and save this, and now you can see where the author appears. This is the related content, and the categories appear here. So the next field is an HTML area. As soon as I click here, Lots of nice formatting options appear. I'll go ahead and put in some text. Uh, some text goes here, lorem ipsum, and all that. And here I could add bulleted list or numbered list, increase, decrease, indent, could add images. I'll show you the link feature, which is pretty nice. You can create content links to any other content in the site or you can add URL links to external websites, download links to images or files, and even email links. You could even make the link open in a new window or add a tooltip. Next is tags, and tags will appear here in the tag cloud. This is a very nice feature here. The tag input will remember uh, whatever was entered before, so you can go ahead and select those options. And I'll add uh, giraffe to this. And giraffe hasn't been entered before, so I'm creating that tag now. And it will show up here when I save the content. I'm going to go ahead and allow comments for this post. I won't make it a sticky post. If it was a sticky post, then it would appear at the top of the list on the home page, and the title would be red. 
I will add a featured image. There are two ways to add images. One is with the drop down, and now you can select any image that already exists as content, or you can upload a new image, which is what I'll do now. I'll pick this nice giraffe picture, and I do want this to appear in the slideshow on the home page, so I'll check that box. We don't need this content to appear in the menu, it will simply appear on the list on the home page. The settings, you could change the language and security permissions if everyone is added with read access and that means that this post will be public and anybody visiting your site can see this content without needing to log in. So I'll go ahead and save that now. Command S. And here we see in the preview that it looks just fine. So I'll go ahead and publish this content. You see, all content created in Enonic XP is created in the draft branch, but it won't be visible to the public until it's in the master branch, and you do that by publishing the content. So this button opens the publishing wizard, and here is the post content that I want to publish. But this post content has other related contents, like the categories and authors, and even the site content, and these need to be published as well. So I'll just go ahead and click the Publish button. Now all of these would be available online if this were on a live production server. Let's go ahead and close this and let's preview our site now with the preview button that opens in a new tab and now we see that the giraffe's head has been cut off because this image is scaled horizontally while the giraffe image in the content was scaled vertically. So let's edit that image. Double click to edit. Notice the image was saved under the post content. Double click to edit that. And now I will add a focal point with this button here. And if I put the focal point on the giraffe's head, then the giraffe's head will always be in the picture, no matter how it's scaled. Go back here and refresh the home page. There it is. Very nice feature there. Now, even though I edited and saved this content, the public won't see the change until it's published again. You'll notice here the image was modified. That means the public won't be seeing the same version that you see here. So we can just publish this again. And now the public will see the giraffe's head from the last change we made. Now that I've created a blog post content, I'll show you how to modify the page that it's rendered on. This two column layout you see and all the parts come from a page template. Page templates can be found in the templates folder. I'll go ahead and edit the post show two column template. This page template supports the post content type. That means all post contents will use this template by default to fill out the page. Any changes I make to this page template will affect all the post contents. The first thing I'm going to do is collapse this content editor wizard so I'll have more room to work with. Now I'll open the inspect panel where you'll see the configuration options for any component I select on the page. Some parts don't have any configuration. I'll edit the recent post to change the title to new posts and I'll make it list 10 posts instead of the default 5. You'll see the changes take effect when I click Apply down here at the bottom. And there it is. You may have noticed these context menus that appear when parts are selected. These give you various options like duplicate a part, remove a part, or reset. When you reset a part, it turns back into a part placeholder where you can select any type of part you want. I'm going to turn this back into the post single part. From the context menu, you can also insert components like images, parts, or text. I'll go ahead and insert a text component now. Notice it appears below the part that I had selected. With text components, you can add whatever custom text you want. Whenever text is highlighted, then the text editor icons appear. I'll go ahead and center this and turn the edit mode off. And now I can drag and drop this component to the top. In fact, you can drag and drop any component to wherever you want on the page. 
but remember that any changes you make to the page template will affect all of the content, all the post content, and you might not want that. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and remove this custom text field now. I think that's enough changes for the demo. I'll save this page template with Command S, and now we can go back to the Content Manager and see how all the changes are now on all the posts. Notice the search field is now down in the middle and before it was up at the top. But what if we wanted to modify one individual post? We can do that by editing a post and then clicking on the page and selecting Customize. Now we can customize this individual page and change anything we want about it. For example, I'll put the search field back to the top. And once I save this, now this one post will render differently than all the others. But be aware that once you customize a post, then any changes you make to the page template won't affect it any longer. So the other posts still have the search field down by the middle, and the draft post that I customize has it back up at the top. I'll show you a couple of other configuration changes you can make. For example, in the categories, you can make it show the count so you'll see how many posts exist in each category. And you can do the same thing with the archives. Almost ready to wrap things up, but first I'll show you how to edit site-wide configurations. You do that by editing the site content. And here you can see all the applications that are part of the site. And Superhero only has one application. And I'll edit the configuration by clicking this pencil. From here I can change the Google Analytics key. I could add a background image or edit any of these other things here. I'm going to make it list 10 posts on the home page instead of 5. And when you apply this, it also saves the site content. And it's uh, looking good, listing all 10 contents here. Close this tab, and now it's time to publish the entire site. So while the site is highlighted, you can click that Publish button. And because I'm ready to publish the entire site, I need to make sure I click the Include Child Items. And I'll just publish that. And now 29 items were published. Feel free to experiment with the demo content all you like. You can't break anything. And you can reset the demo content at any time by deleting the entire site and then stopping and restarting the app. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that now. Delete all 40 items. Now because everything was published already, now everything just gets marked for deletion and you have to actually publish the delete to remove everything completely. And now that everything is deleted, I'll switch back to the Applications app and stop that and start it again. Now when I go back to the Content Manager and refresh, there's the fresh new site with all the original demo content. This wraps up the Superhero Basics. Leave a comment if you have any questions or visit our forum at discuss.enonic.com.